Hello from Sukkot in Baltimore. It's a beautiful day outside and I feel very inspired to share something with you today. There's something that I've been working on for since before Rosh Hashanah. It's basically, it's one of my New Year's resolutions, something that I've been thinking about a lot. And I've been having my ups and downs with it, struggling, doing well, successes. And I figured that, first of all, it's very likely that many of you might be grappling with the same issue and it will likely help me and as well help you if I share a bit about what I'm working on. So the subject is learning how to need and learning how to acknowledge that you need help and learning how to ask for help, which is interesting because I'm Canadian. For those of you that don't know the basic Canadian personality, it's being very, very polite, being very careful, being very, very cautious about making any requests or stepping on anyone's toes. So even if I were to ask someone if I could do them a favor, I would be like, feel free to say no, just let me know if it's okay, just wanted to ask if, you know, very, very, very polite. Um, constantly apologizing, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry for stepping on you. And always, you know, with any sort of request, always kind of just saying, please don't feel obligated, please like, don't worry, I, I don't mean any trouble. I, you know, very, very, um, that sort of personality. So I have a lot of that in me innately because that's the culture that I grew up in. I also have an innate do-it-yourself personality, which is, I get it from my dad, who's also a big do-it-yourselfer. My personality is that I walk into a room and I see what's needed and I just get down and do it right away. It's one of my strengths, which is why I'm good at some of the things that I do, but it also means that I take on way too much often because the way my mind works, it's often easier to just do something and instead of actually ask someone else for help. So that's my basic personality. Um, so as you can see, because of the Canadianness and also the do-it-yourselfness, asking for help is not one of my strengths. What's funny is that to consider asking for help to be a strength is something that I never really thought about. You know, you always think about, oh, someone that asks for help might be weak, they might be needy, they might be selfish because they're asking someone else to do something for them, but that's actually not the case. Asking for help, at least the way I see it right now, is a strength and it's a character trait that one needs to work on. And it's actually in Judaism something that we are obligated to do and obligated to acknowledge. And first of all, in Judaism, if you're obligated to do something, it means that it's something that's probably hard for you and it also means that's something that's very good for you. So asking for help. My first real time asking for help was when my husband and I got married. We had to get married within two and a half months for reasons that, you know, we had to basically leave the country and get married before we left the country. Two and a half months to plan a wedding, which even in religious circles is quite fast to have a wedding. So when we started planning our wedding, it was, I had no choice but to ask for help. I needed to ask friends, I needed to ask mentors, family to do stuff for me, and it was very hard for me to begin with. And I was talking to um, my Robinson, one of my mentors, about this, and she said, Andrea, do you know that it's a mitzvah, meaning a good deed, an obligatory deed in the Torah, to make a bride and groom happy? And I was like, of course I know that. She was like, so who are you to take away this mitzvah from someone else? Whoa. Wait, so like by asking someone for help, I am allowing them to do a mitzvah. Wow, that's really cool. So when she said it like that, I was like, wow, now I'm allowing people to give to me. Now I'm allowing people to help out and I'm allowing them to do a mitzvah, which is to make me happy and take a little weight off my shoulders and allow me to get married to my soulmate before we leave the country. So that was the first time I really started thinking that you know, this is something I need to work on. This is not one of my strengths, but it's something that I definitely need to strive towards. It's really interesting that if we look at our davening and our prayers that we say every single day, that the Shemona Esra, the Amidah, is full of requests and needs. And this is the height of our prayers, that we go through a whole process of praying, which, you know, we get closer and closer and closer to God and elevate ourselves. And then the, the massive peak of this prayer is ask, standing in front of God and asking him for stuff. Now, when you think about it, that's like, what? You know, shouldn't I be just in this exalted, meditative, amazing, close, high state? 
maybe, but that's actually, that's not what Judaism tells us. It says the highest state of closeness with our creator is asking our creator for stuff. We acknowledge our own personal needs, we acknowledge the needs of our community, we acknowledge the needs of our world, and we ask you know, for healing of the world in this prayer service. So why is that? Why is this the height of our prayer service? So when I'm gonna, this is beyond the scope of this little video, but we as human beings, as neshamas, we were created with needs. We were created to have needs. We are not full in this world. I don't think any of us can say that they feel, they feel content 100% of the time. And if you can, then maybe there's something wrong. <laughs> we're not supposed to feel content 100% of the time. We are supposed to feel needs. So we have physical needs like hunger and thirst, and we need shelter, and we need warmth, we need clothing, we need all these physical needs. And we also have spiritual needs. We have spiritual needs that we need to ask for. We feel lost, we feel empty, we feel disconnected, we, we don't know where to go, we have these choices. You know, we have needs and we need, have things that we need to figure out. And God tells us that asking for these needs and acknowledging these needs and stepping before him and saying, I need help, I need you to help me, I need guidance, I need this, I need, I need, I need even money, I need, to find my soulmate, I need um, my, my son to come back home, I need all these things. Asking God for these things is the height, it's the most close that we can get to God is asking. So that's a very interesting thing to think about. And you know, I hadn't really acknowledged that sitting and asking God for things was something that I really needed to work on. I'm very innately good at being thankful, great at being thankful, great at being you know, acknowledging all the, everything that I have and all the gifts I have, but acknowledging my needs is something that is difficult for me. So I decided for this Yom Kippur and for this year that this is something that I need to work on. So I want to share with you some successes that I've had this year so far, which it's been only a couple of weeks. It's been about a week and a half of this year, so to have a couple of successes is good, and I'm very happy that I'm finally learning how to ask for help. So. Yesterday, I had over four girls for dinner. Thank you guys for coming over. It was awesome. We had a female bonding time night. And my husband and I, we have a sukkah in our backyard. And we also have a very large dining room table. And it was quite chilly outside. So I knew that when girls coming over, I knew they wanted to eat in the sukkah, but I wasn't sure if they were going to be really up to eating outside in the cold. So I couldn't set the table, I mean really, okay, I could have set both tables, but that I don't have enough plates to do that. Um, so what I did is I just waited for them to come to make a decision. So of course they came and all the stuff is in the kitchen, just, you know, not set, not ready. And I could have either done my regular thing, which is just telling the girls to go, you know, socialize in the living room or something while I set up everything by myself, because that's my instinct is just to do it. Or I could have asked for help. So I did, and I asked help for help, and I said, here are the dishes, here is the silverware, and we're gonna, we, we decided that we were going to eat outside because we had sweaters and blankets. And I said, if you could set the table for me, that would be wonderful. And off they went. They said, okay. And it's funny, there's something inside me that I innately expect that if I don't do it myself, then somehow it's not going to happen. And that's, that's just my own thing. And it was so funny that um, the girls came out, they said, oh, the table's all set. So then we washed for bread, and then we brought the bread down to the sukkah. And I had the most amazing feeling when walking into the sukkah, when I saw this beautiful table just set with flowers and plates and napkins and everything, just beautiful, beautiful. And I didn't do it, yet... These girls had done it for me, and it had brought them pleasure to do it, and it brought me pleasure, and it was just the nicest feeling. And for me, it felt so much more accomplished to ask people for help and to like have the help actually come than to just do it myself and run around all stressed out while just telling the girls that it's okay and, and while they can just watch me. And you know what? It's hard to sit around and watch someone else do everything. You want to help. So by allowing someone to help, you're actually helping them, right? So that was a little thing that happened yesterday, and I realized, you know, wow, I really should just ask people to you know, do stuff for me more often, because they want to. They really want to. 
So this is actually an interesting concept which I was thinking about recently. Is that you know we all have our depressed moments. You know, thank God, you know, clinical depression is a different issue. But we have the moments where we feel down, where we feel lost, where we feel kind of useless and disconnected. And I've found that every single time that I feel that way, the best way to get out of that state of mind is to do something for someone else. Whether it means lifting a piece of furniture for someone or just calling, some, calling my grandmother to say hi when I'm feeling down. It's so funny. She thinks I'm calling her to make her feel better. You should, no, I'm calling her because I want to feel better. So hi, Grandma, if you see that. Now you know, now you know my big secret. Um, but really doing something for someone else, it gives you a sense of place. It gives you a sense of purpose. It gives you a sense of, wow, I'm really needed in this world. So helping someone else is actually the best way to get out of a rut. So when you think about it this way, the best way to help a friend that might be going through something or you know, might be feeling depressed and useless and lost is to ask that friend for help. It's amazing. You might actually be able to help someone out of a depressive state of mind by asking them to help you bake challah or to help you put the kids to bed or anything. You might be liberating that person from their state of mind. So it's not just you asking for help because you need something. You are helping someone else by asking them for help. So I also have to say that there's, I've been having this issue um, for about two years, and it's a big, big personal issue that I've been having. And it's been, it's, I, I have to say, it got to the point where it was just something that I accepted. And it was just something that like is going on, and you know, I didn't really know how to deal with it, didn't really know how to help. And two days ago, I actually decided well, actually, my husband helped me decide that I was going to finally speak to someone about it and ask for help on it. And it's amazing. The, do you know what's incredible? The issue is in, currently in the process of getting resolved. And it's currently in the process of not becoming something inevitable that I have to live with. And it's amazing. I thought this was something that was not solvable, and it's actually really simple. It's amazing. So, you know, God willing, that will be resolved soon. Please, you know, let, let's all hope together that that gets resolved. Now, there's certain things that we think are inevitable about our situations that really, it's a phone call away from being solved. And I, you know, I learned a big lesson from you know, even asking those girls to set the table and also dealing, dealing with this other issue, is that asking for help is one of the deepest and most spiritual things we can do in this world. And we learn that when we look at the order of how Jews pray, is that asking God to fulfill our needs is really, really, really holy. So asking people for stuff is holy. Now, again, if you're getting to the point where it's selfish and you're taking advantage of people, of course, that's a different issue. But genuinely acknowledging your need and acknowledging your lack and acknowledging that, for, that someone else can help you is a huge, huge spiritual level. It's incredible. So. I hope you enjoy what I shared right now. I would love to hear how some of you, if you've had trouble asking people for help, how you've dealt with that, and um, I would love to hear your advice. I hope you enjoyed this, and good luck. A happy new year to everyone, and chag Bye-bye.